So to explain a little bit more how that works is basically when you have a 15 volt tap, what that means is that you're starting at 15 volts at the transformer and then along the line as you add more lights and run that wire out, you're eventually gonna get some voltage drop where at a light way down the road, you might only get 12 volts. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is about transformer, how do I size that properly, which one should I use? And I mean there's all kinds of uh, cheaper models that you can find at Home Depot and online and that kind of stuff. And I'd, I'd really caution uh, using anything but like a good stainless steel one like this. And especially if you're putting in an LED system, you want to get something, and I'll show you guys some close-ups, but you want to get something that has like a 15 volt tap inside. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to really help reduce any kind of voltage drop issues and give you a ton of flexibility with your system. When you get some of the small, cheaper ones, they're not gonna have that option. So I'll talk about that and some things you can do there to make your uh, life even easier putting in a good, efficient LED, low voltage lighting system. But basically what you do is you, you're, gonna, um, you're gonna tally up all your lights. So the first thing you wanna do is determine how many lights am I gonna put on, our, on my system? That's why we do our free consultations where you can send me pictures of your property and we'll give you a pretty good idea of how many and what types of lights you need. And then from there, all your lights, all your fixtures, whether it's somewhere on the box or somewhere on the bulb, should tell you how many watts they're gonna use. So for example, this is, a, uh, this is just over, it's about a six and a half watt uh, lamp, which is a brighter, fairly bright one, they call it a 50 watt equivalent. And what we want to do is we want to add up all the lights and all the wattages. So let's just pretend this is a five watt. We got 10 of those. Well, basically we're at 50 watts. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure we have a transformer that's at least 20% higher than that. And the lower quality your lights are, the bigger you want to size that because there's something also that it should tell you on the box or on your fixture that it doesn't always tell you when you buy something out of the big box store. Um, but there is a setting on there called the VA. The VA is actually how many watts uh, it takes. So the better the quality of the fixture, the closer that number is gonna be to what it actually is. So this, for example, this has, uh, this is a six watt lamp. This uses just over seven is their VA, which means it uses seven watts. So you actually wanna size your transformer based on that and not the wattage of the lamp. Because a lot of times I see cheap lighting fixtures that say they're three watts, but in essence, they're using six or seven watts. So if you put too many of those on a system, you're gonna overload your transformer. So something to keep in mind, but general rule of thumb, add up all your lights and make sure you size a transformer that's at least 20% larger. If you're using a good uh, LED system um, and a good low voltage uh, system at that, you don't really have to worry too much as you used to with halogen if your transformer's too big. I'll tell you, if you're doing an LED system, um, you really don't need anything that's larger than 300 watts. Uh, if you do, that means you have a huge property and you're probably not doing it yourself anyway. And then you gotta start calculating some things. But we literally just did a project. We had about 75 lights on it. It was about seven to 10 acre property. And we never, we only had to use one transformer that was 300 watts. All the other ones were at 150 watts because um, just the way uh, that LED systems work. And the other thing is because we have a 15 volt tap. So to explain a little bit more how that works is basically when you have a 15 volt tap, what that means is that you're starting at 15 volts at the transformer and then along the line as you add more lights and run that wire out, you're eventually gonna get some voltage drop where at a light way down the road, you might only get 12 volts. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you how the DBRY connectors work and why we use our DBRY connectors is because sometimes when you're running your system, um, you're gonna have a line that's coming in from somewhere and you're gonna have a line going out to somewhere and then you might have one light somewhere in the background that you need to run a 12 gauge wire to. But if you have three 12 gauge wires coming in, you're not gonna be able to fit them into your BBS2 connectors. So that's when we use our DBY connectors. So anytime you need to tee off 
uh, is a good way to say it. That's when you use your DBRY connector. And the way you do that is now we've got our one of our wires coming in, our 12 gauge. We're gonna strip that, <coughs> strip the ends off that. We got our wire going out. We're gonna split that. We're gonna strip the ends off of that. And then we've got our third wire that's gonna be going out to our next fixture that we're gonna strip that. And then there's no way we're gonna fit all of those wires into our DBRY connector. So what we do is we take our morettes for our DBRY connector and we're gonna connect one wire from each of those outlets. We're gonna twist them together inside of our regular morette. And then you're gonna do the same with the other ones. You're gonna take those, you're gonna twist them together in your regular morette. And then you're gonna take your gel filled tube, you're gonna open up the bottom and you're just gonna slide that inside and then close that off. And snap it tight. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, slide it up and in, pull your wires, Snap that tight, and now you've been able to tee off a line and those wires are not going anywhere. All right guys, now how do you wire the last fixture on the line? So this is the last fixture, so you have your 12 gauge wire that goes to it, but there's nothing else at the end. So on all of your BVS2 connectors, you have three terminals, and this happens a lot where um, you're not gonna have a wire going out. So what people do is they try and jam all the wires into here. And really, the way that it works is now you're still gonna have two connections at every single light fixture, but in each connector, you're just gonna have your 12 gauge wire going into the larger terminal, and then you're gonna have your wire from your fixture going into the smaller terminal. You're gonna snap that tight and there's all the wires that are gonna go in there. So there's gonna be an extra hole in the last light on your line. And then you're gonna do the same thing with your other connector. You're gonna have your last 12 gauge wire going in. And then you're gonna have your fixture wire going into the small port, lock those up. So your last light still has two connectors, but there's only two wires going in each one of those connectors instead of trying to jam them all in one. Even though it's the last light, the only difference is there's no 12 gauge wire going out. So the nice thing with LED as opposed to when it was halogen systems, is halogen you had to be very precise that you were operating kind of between 10 and a half to 11 and a half volts at every single light, which means you had to be really, um, really caught cognizant of what type of wire you used, uh, how long your runs were, what kind of lights, all that kind of stuff. Most good LED lamps will operate properly anywhere from nine all the way to 15 volts, which means if you're starting at 15 volts, you can lose up to six volts along that line and still not have it affect your light, which if you're using 12 gauge wire, which I would recommend if you're on any do-it-yourself project, just use 12 gauge. You're not gonna save that much money by using something smaller and you limit your ability to grow on that system. With 12 gauge wire, a general rule of thumb is I can put 100 watts on a single line and run that wire up to 300 feet without having enough significant voltage drop to cause any kinds of issues. Now this is where uh, a transformer like this that I'll show you comes in handy is now, say you've got, say you're under your, your total wattage for your transformer but you've got a bunch of lights that need to run out a long ways over there and a bunch that need to run out a long ways over there. And you don't want to loop the whole system because then you're going to have a ton of wire and you're almost definitely going to have some voltage drop. Well, what you can do, especially when you're getting a good transformer that has a larger tap like this, is you can actually run multiple wires out of this transformer. So I can have my wires that are going in, I can have one line that is going into my 
common tap and one line that's going into my 15 volt tap and have them running out that way. And then whatever line I have coming in, say from this side over here, I can do the same thing and I can just twist those wires up and I can put two in one terminal and the other two in the other. And then basically what I've done is I've split my voltage uh, my voltage drop across both those lines. So if you're running excessive lines and you have them going in two directions, just run two wires from your transformer. And as a matter of fact, with these transformers that we use in all our kits, <coughs> this is a 150 watt EX transformer from FX Luminaire. I can actually fit up to three different runs out of this transformer. And I'll show you what even a larger transformer with multiple taps looks like that you can do the same thing. We're getting pretty close to getting wrapped up this project. Um, we've got all our lights in. So basically, you know, our first step was we uh, we took a design and we went and chose all our lights. What was cool about this one is, uh, you know, this is a client who actually had um, emailed in pictures for a free consultation. And because it was on Vancouver Island, we were able to do it. So uh, we looked through all those pictures. We gave him some recommendations. Uh, and then we give them a price to actually install it, which is not always the case because some of you guys are, are far away. I wish we could, but we just can't. But um, what was cool is then we got on site and a lot of what we had determined from the pictures were very accurate. So we already had a pretty good idea of what we were gonna do, how many lights, and we were able to size the transformers beforehand. But sometimes, and it's often the case, we get on site and there's some things we wanna add or some things we wanna take away. So, um, so that's how we go and then determine our transformer. So we'll always try and, and determine that based on a design. Um, but the key is just leave it a little bit bigger if you're not sure because you always wanna make sure you have enough room. And if you're using an LED system, um, it's not as crucial that you get it uh, the exact transformer as when you had a halogen system. With a halogen system, you had transformers that had multiple taps and you really had to be careful that you were getting the right voltage to the right lamps or you were just gonna burn them out a lot quicker. But if you're, uh, if you're getting an LED system, a lot of times you'll see on the box, it'll say that your LED is usually rated from 9 volts all the way to 15 volts, which means it's gonna operate within that range, whereas halogen was usually between 11 and 12, so you really had to do your math. Um, with LED that eliminates a lot of that so a general rule of thumb and if you're if you have more questions about sizing your transformer and voltage drop and all that go to YouTube and just search lighting doctor voltage drop there's a video where I go into a lot of detail and show you a chart and everything uh, but general rule of thumb uh, on 300 feet of wire you can put up to 100 watts and not really have any voltage drop issues as long as you're using a larger transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap which means you're starting at 15 volts and all the way down the line you might get down to 10 volts but that's still going to run that light and it's still going to be as bright as it should because that bulb is rated from 9 to 15 volts again assuming it's a it's a good one um, that's why we always say not all products are created equal so you have to do some due diligence there uh, we do a lot of that uh, in our kits but um, just just buyer beware um, so basically it's really simple to go and size your transformers you take all your lights you add up all the wattage of all the lights so if you have a bunch of five watt up lights and you've got um, let's call it 20 of them well that uh, that comes out to a hundred watts but you want to size that transformer a little bit larger because depending on the efficiency of that bulb uh, the more efficient it is the closer that that actual wattage is going to be to, to five watts but the less least efficient or the lesser efficient bulbs are going to sometimes be almost 10 watts even though the box says 10 watts and that's something called their their actual it's called their va their actual wattage um, so you got to be careful about that that's why we always say size it a little bit more but general of thumb add up all your lights um, add up all your lights and then size your transformer 20 30 40 percent more than that uh, if you don't want to have to worry about voltage drop get a good transformer that has a 15 volt tap and you can run 100 watts on 300 feet of line without running into that issue of uh, losing any brightness at the end of the line. But that's basically it when it comes to a transformer. The only other thing I was going to mention is the timer options. Now, um, you know, you see a lot of the dinosaur looking um, timers where it's this little digital or this little um, analog wheel that you got all these little tabs you got to stick out. They got these. Um, these different digital timers that you got to be a rocket science to operate. The nice thing is that a transformer like this, um, we use one of these. It's from, uh, from Wyon. It's a Wi-Fi timer. But basically, there's 
there's dozens of these on the market and if you have a smart home system have a look if they already have an outdoor plug because that's all this is it's basically a wi-fi plug for your outdoors and all you have to do is now when you go plug this transformer into your gfci receptacle um, all you're going to do is you're going to flip this into the on position so you're just going to leave your transformer in all the time but this little thing here where usually you would have a photo cell which again i highly recommend against because photo cells just fail all the time you have to have your transformer in the right position because it's in a dark shaded position your lights are going to be on all the time so all those kinds of things but <laughs> to get back to it basically where it says to plug in your timer or your photo cell or whatever all you have to do is unplug that plug in your your wi-fi plug whether that be this one or whether that be one uh, based on the smart home system you have go and plug it into there and then you plug this guy into into your um, to your plug-in and then you just close that up leave it in the on position and then you can go and operate everything from your Wi-Fi plug and usually most of these you don't need a hub anymore um, they have their own app so you can just go download it and it usually walks you through how to do that in two or three steps and all of a sudden now you have a, a Wi-Fi landscape lighting system but you haven't paid tons and tons of money for it Another thing that we do a lot of times if, because I get asked all the time, well, in my front yard, my backyard, I want to be able to zone them different so I can turn them on at different times, kind of like a sprinkler system. There, there is some really good systems that are out there that do that. Um, they tend to be quite costly. They're great systems, but it depends on your budget. If you don't want to do that and spend that kind of money on a system, just go and use a separate transformer. You know, in this case, on this project, that's what we're doing. We've got one of these for the backyard and one for the front. Luckily, because we have this timer, we can run both those controllers on the exact same app and set them up with totally different schedules, uh, which is what's cool about going and adding something like this to your transformers. And it doesn't have to be this one. It can be basically any outdoor Wi-Fi plug that you can plug into here is gonna work. So make your life a lot easier. Turn your transformer into a Wi-Fi system. Go and size it properly. Be safe, build it. Um, select it larger in case you want to add on down the road too so hopefully that helps answer your transformer questions but like I said if you need more definition on uh, voltage drop and stuff go to uh, YouTube and search uh, voltage drop lighting doctor and I guarantee you'll find something hey guys thanks so much for watching I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips now please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page it's Full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions and also check out our try it before you buy it light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a king innovation insta light which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property try it for 14 days if you don't love it send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund and if not you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback. Have a great day.